to FM Aquascapes. Uh, today's video is just going to be a short one. I'm going to try and keep it short and simple. Um, basically, I just wanted to give you a quick little video on what I sometimes feed my Otto Sinkless. So they are small sort of sucker fish, small catfish, and they love zucchini. They love courgette. If you're in Europe, it's courgette. If you're over in the States, it's zucchini. So I'm just going to quickly show you a quick video on how to prepare your courgette or your zucchini and how to get it ready for your autos before you put it in your tank. Okay, it's real simple. Here we go. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is get yourself a zucchini or a courgette. Then you're going to stick it under the sink and you're going to give it a quick little rinse, give it a quick little wash. Okay, so you're just going to give it a quick little wash under the sink, nice and easy. Give it a nice little wash. There you go. Nice and clean. Right, so what I like to do is I like to just cut the ends off. You don't need the ends. Cut it in about half. And then what you're going to do is you're going to cut about, they're going to be about a centimeter thick, your pieces. There you go. Then what I like to do is I like to just place them in a pot against a preheated water that I've pre preheated in a kettle. Pull that on top. Just gonna, you're just gonna blanch them, okay? So you're not really gonna heat them up that long. So I'm gonna stick them on the stove for about two minutes. That's it. Okay. So stick them on for about two minutes. And that's it. So the next step is you're going to cool them down. So all you're going to do is you're going to take your pot, you're going to put it in your sink, and you're going to turn the water off. This is what I tend to do. I tend to just pour it, cool them down. And what you want to do is you want to make them sink. Okay, so what you're going to do to get them to sink, just put them in cold water. So I just tend to You'll see some people put them in a, a bowl, but I just tend to pour cold water into the pot, let it run for a bit, and then I let them sit in the cold water because you don't want you want to stop that cooking process really. So you should now start to see them sink. So one by one, they will start to sink. And there you go. That's the first one. And the reason you're doing this, guys, is so that it obviously sinks into your tank. I mean, you can weigh them down as well, but this is a nice little technique. Just put it in cold water once you've once you cooked them, and then they will they will they will start to sink stop floating on you. Oh, those two, they're not playing ball. That one's just about to sink. This one looks like it's about to go. They will get there eventually. <laughs> now some people like to cut the skin off the courgette. I don't because I know that my ottos and my shrimps, they just love everything about the skin and, and everything inside it. Some people even cut out the, the inner sort of pith of it um, because they don't they don't think that the um, ottos or the fish are gonna eat any of the seeds. Now that might be true, but you just wanna obviously keep, keep the stuff in there for about three, four hours. I wouldn't leave them in there for any longer because otherwise it's gonna start fouling your water. Um, yeah, so make sure you've, some people put a fork in it and they just put the fork in so it's easy to take out. I tend to just let it drop because it's, yeah, 
it's just easy you can you can fish them out easily afterwards if you leave it in for too long though it will start to sort of decom not de well yeah it will start to decompose but it's, it's going to take on a lot of water and what happens is yeah that's through osmosis now what's going to happen is it's going to just every time you try to pick it up it's just going to fall apart in your in your hands so yeah i wouldn't go longer than maybe four hours some people leave it in the whole time but again i don't tend to do that because i don't want it to start messing around with you know my water parameters get sort of ammonia spikes and things like that so in my opinion leave it in for a few hours then take it out let them have a good munch another thing some people say is that the ottos and the plecos and the shrimp don't necessarily go straight for it that might be true so you might need to, especially the ottos sometimes because they're quite shy fish sometimes you um you need to put the food in a few times before they actually go for it so don't don't lose hope Keep, keep trying it and, and they will eventually, they'll go for it. Um, a nice little trick to do is to put it in areas where they're going to, where you know that they like to hang out. So if you know that they, they go and sit in certain places on the bottom of the tank. Now my autos, they do do that. They don't just sit on the glass the whole time. They've got a certain place where I, I know where they go onto the substrate. So I always, I always kind of plonk it there in that little position and they'll always find it. So I'll try and give you a few shots of them once they're on it. Um, but yeah, I've got shrimp in my tanks as well. They absolutely love it. I've got Amano shrimps in my large tank. I've got a clown pleco. He absolutely loves zucchini, loves courgette. Uh, there are some other things that you can put in there. So some people put in sweet potato uh, because it's less starchy than sort of normal potato. So it doesn't foul your water as much, apparently. Um, another good thing is some people put carrots. Now, if you're going to do any of those things, you want to, you want to like the carrots, I would say parboil them because carrots are very, very, very tough. The reason you're, you're heating these up is to is to soften the the vegetables. Now, some people put in cucumbers and stuff. They don't they don't do any parboiling or anything like that. They don't blanch it. Um, but I think it's a good idea to do that because if you don't do that, then yeah, it takes time for it to sink, and it also maybe takes a little bit longer for them to actually be able to get to the food itself because it's a little bit hard. So yeah, it's it's one of those things you want to try out, try different things. But I generally put in warm water, boiled boiled water from a kettle. I put it on, on the heat on the range, yeah, on the, on, the, on the stove, and then it takes about a minute to get boiling, and then I leave it for about a minute. So minute to get to boiling, minute boiling, that's it. And then I take them straight out, and it's worked really well for me. You can also freeze the, you know, the, the bits that you don't use. You can freeze it and then take it back out, and you can use them on different days. So I've done that as well, and it works just fine. Now, some other, some other vegetables or some other things that you might want to try out, uh, would be things like pumpkin so plecos will eat pumpkin you might want to try them with your autos yeah again it's just it's just sort of trial and error i've never tried pumpkin with with my autos but yeah it's, i should have really tried it you know during halloween but i didn't um you can also use squash you know different types of squashes you could even try fruit the only thing with fruit is fruit tends to break down really really quickly so again you want to keep an eye on that so it doesn't foul your water also, I wouldn't go too crazy on fruit, kind of treat it like a sweet. Um, yeah, not too often, not too, not, not, not every day. But yeah, variety is good for your, for your autos, good for your plecos. Um, one thing I would say about fruit is also that you want to make sure that, yeah, be careful with it because certain fruits will be you know they might be acidic they might be they might release acids into your water and that can obviously affect your ph especially if you've got soft water um yeah that can that can unbalance your ph that could de well kind of change your ph a little a lot have more of an effect i should say on your ph if you've got soft water if you've got hard water it tends to be less you're gonna have less of, a, of an effect on your on your ph so just be careful you know if you're going to use fruits don't don't overdo it put small small pieces in and make sure you remove it because the last thing you want is ammonia spikes your ph is you know your ph of your water changing so it's, yeah try these things out don't be too scared of it um like i said if you if it, especially if it's, you've got a well planted tank if you're watching my videos you know that all my videos are really well planted if you've got well planted tanks you know you're going to have more of a buffer if if you will when it comes to sort of ammonia nitrite and nitrate spikes so so don't panic too much about that stuff um so yeah if, if you like my videos please click the like button it really helps um another thing is obviously subscribe if you haven't subscribed already i've got a really cool build coming up 
I've already just started on it, sort of planning it today. So surprise, surprise, it's gonna be coming up soon. Um, so yeah, don't miss it. It's gonna be a good one. I think you guys are gonna like it. All right, so hopefully that helped. If you've, if you've got otters, if you've got plecos, they're gonna love this stuff. So, so give it a try. They'll love you for it, okay? And yeah, it just gives them a bit of variety in their diet. It's a good thing. Okay, take care, everybody. I'll see you soon. Um, next build's gonna be a good one, okay? So hit the like button, really helps the channel. Subscribe, really helps the channel as well. So yeah, see you soon. Take care, bye.